Welcome back to Waters Ironworks. I'm Philip Waters. Uh, this video is coming out a little bit late. Uh, we had a kind of crazy week here in Austin, Texas last week. There was a major snowstorm, power outages, water out outages. Um, stuff is just starting to get back to normal, but we did want to make sure to get a video out this week. We will be continuing with the Abana controlled hand forging. Uh, we did a review in this in the last video. And like I said, we're going to try and go get through every one of the, the lessons in here, kind of see how it is, walk everybody through those. Um, we'll start off with a few lessons right after another, and then we'll probably drop it to once a month or so. Lesson one is in how to draw a taper out in a square bar. Uh, pretty basic stuff, but good to know. Uh, I've got a new blackboard. I'm going to walk you guys back there. We're going to talk a little bit about this project before we get started what we're looking for in some of the areas that we might go wrong with it. And then we'll try and show you those as we're forging as well. We're going to start out with 24 inches of three inch square stock. And what we're going to do is put a taper on it. Um, the lesson didn't give an exact amount for, for my purposes. I'm going to mark off two inches at the end of the steel and I'm going to draw that out till it's four inches long. I chose the four inch measurement because that's how long my anvil is. So it makes a nice guide as I'm drawing it out. And what I'm really looking for is that this point has nice even sides coming to it, very flat, that there's a clear transition between the end of my taper and the start of the rest of my bar. There aren't any straight hammer marks or fuzziness to that. And that if I rotate this bar, this point doesn't waver. So it is dead center. And as I flip it around, I'll be able to see that. There are a couple areas that things can go wrong on this. And this is really what this, this exercise is all about, what you're trying to learn, right? You can wind up with uh, any of these things that I've got in the F minus category as opposed to the A plus category. Um, so the first one, if you don't have smooth hammer blows, right? And so what I'm trying to represent with this drawing is that there's a hammer blow and then kind of a bump and then another hammer blow and another bump. Um, where this is going to come from is, is a couple different places. If you don't have your hammer well dressed and it has sharp edges, that will tend to leave lines as you're drawing out or doing any work. Um, if you're working only at a very hot heat, then you'll tend to get kind of this wavy pattern. A great way to correct this is to continue to work the bar as it cools down a little bit. It gets harder to move. You're moving just kind of the surface, making smaller movements with it. And you can come in and clean this up and get it nice and level. The second thing we may see, this is a real exaggeration, is instead of this straight flat line, there may be a big dip, there may be a hump, but somehow instead of a nice flat line that we can check against a ruler to make sure it's straight, um, we're going to have some sort of deviation to it. This is not a, a great drawing, um, but I think illustrates a, a very common uh, thing that I see. And that's kind of a stair step when it comes to the line of our, our point. So here we've got a nice flat line, right? But if my angle changes, like I've got a very steep point and then it transitions to a flatter taper, and then back to a sharper taper, I'll wind up with this kind of stair step. I, I see it all the time um, with people who are just learning to blacksmith and, and really getting good at this. So you've got a nice even taper is a sign that you're kind of moving up to the next level uh, and you know a little bit about what you're doing. Another thing we'll watch for is, and again, very exaggerated, but if our point isn't centered, right? There's gonna be four directions that we have to be centered on. It could be off in any of those. And we'll see this if we've got a square and we're rotating the bar through it. Our point should really be at the midline of this bar, regardless of how we flip that. So we'll be taking a look for that. The final series of problems that we may run into, and I'll show you guys some ways to correct this, is instead of this being square through the entire section, right, we're tapering um, basically a pyramid here. We want all of a series of concentric squares going through here and where we might run into problems are um, that our angles get off. We might get a diamond shaped. This is extremely common. It's normally caused by somebody 
not fully rotating 90 degrees back and forth when they're hammering. Um, it can be hard to correct if you don't know what you're doing. We'll, we'll look at how to correct that. And the other one uh, represented with this X and X plus Y is as we hammer, if we hammer more or harder on one side than we do the other sides, instead of keeping it square, we're going to wind up with a rectangle. Uh, and we don't want that as well. This is pretty easy to fix, right? You've got a, a small side and a longer side. What you want to do is flip it up on the small side. So we'd want this X against the anvil and then hammer here. And that'll push this out and make it wider until it's the same. And if you're rotating the bar as you're hammering, um, that's pretty easy to pick up and, and get pretty accurate with it by just looking. So I'm going to um, get my forge going. I'm going to mark off two inches of steel. We'll get that hot. We'll bring it out to the anvil and we'll start working on one of these. The first one, I'm going to cause some problems um, that we've seen here. We'll talk about ways to fix those again, and then we'll make one. Once we've made one of these, my recommendation, if you really want to get into what I think is kind of the spirit of this, is reproduce them, right? Make four or five of these that are all identical. If you can draw out that same two inches out to four inches and every one of these things look the same, that is a really good skill, right? It's that consistency. It's the reproducibility. You don't want to be lucky and, hey, I, I made one of these. I'm done. You want to really hone these skills to where you're able to do it time after time after time. Uh, when you get to that stage, I think you're ready to move on to the next one. So let's get stuff fired up, and I'll be back with you in a second. All right. I've got two inches of uh, steel marked off there on the end. Before I bring it to the anvil, though, I want to talk a little bit about how to properly draw a point out. And the real key here is that I'm going to have the bar on the very edge of the anvil up at a little bit of an angle. I'm going to bring my hammer down. And if you want to come around and take a look, I want my hammer half on, half off the anvil. I want my blows going below the face of the anvil. And this, this kind of gap right here, that is where my point is going to form. If I'm trying to hammer here or in the face of the anvil, then it's really hard to get a nice sharp point because your hammer is going to run into the anvil. So half on, half off the edge, right there, steel at an angle, hammer at an angle, and you're going to get a good point. If you don't do that, this is way, way harder. We've got our steel. So let's talk about one problem that we may run into. You can see here, I've got a bit of a hangover there, right? Where it's not coming to a point, it's leaning over. The reason for that is I'm not holding it at the edge of the anvil. If you're hanging the steel over the edge, then you're going to get that kind of uh, uh, hangover where you're forging the steel down around the corner of the anvil. The real key to fixing this, making sure that your steel is right there at the edge of the anvil. You can take the steel and steady it against your hip right here in order to try and keep that nice and steady. Um, this bar has been in my forge actually for a little while, so it's warm a, a ways back. The closer to it that you can hold it, the more control you're going to have, the easier it's going to be to hold it there on the edge. Let's heat this up one more time. We'll fix it and continue working on that point. So we're going to bring it back here to the edge. take this to needle sharpness here but that's looking pretty good so we've got our point well established you can see hopefully that's in focus there it's coming to a nice point all the sides are looking relatively even I've got my two inch mark there so the next thing we're gonna do after we heat this up again 
we're going to bring it back over the face of the anvil and we're going to start working our taper back here to this point. And the key, since I want that nice clean transition, is I don't want my hammer blows going past the mark that I've got right there. Everything needs to be in this front two inches. So let's start working this. And so what I'm looking for is rotating back and forth. I want to see this line start coming back nice and smooth and even. So here we've got a bump. I know if I rotate that, I need to knock it down. And I just go back and forth looking for those bumps. So we're going to need to reheat this again. I want to show you though kind of that stair step I was talking about, right? If we look at this, let me grab a piece of chalk here. I've got one angle right up here at the tip, and then I've got another angle right here. So this transition needs to get worked back. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hammer here and work my way back. And that'll move this a little, a little ways back. And then I just hammer there and just keep working my way back until I've got a nice smooth taper the entire way. We've got a little bit of a bend here. We'll put kind of the bridge up, hammer that down. So let's say I had some uneven hammer blows, right, like that. This sort of problem right here, holding the hammer at an angle when you're bringing it down. So if you see kind of this series of hammer marks, you probably need to work on making sure that your hammer is coming straight down. At a cold temperature here, I don't think I can fix that. Let me heat it up and we'll smooth that back out. We're getting pretty close to being done here. A little bit of a hump right here, but you can see how that kind of stair step, the change in the angle has moved further back. And that's what I want to do and just push that all the way back to my two inch mark. I want to make sure I'm keeping an eye on my mark, not hammering past it. that mark here, my anvil is four inches across, so I know I need to draw this out a little bit further. Take one more heat to do that. This is looking pretty good though. I still have a little bit of an angle change back here toward the back, so I'm going to try and clean that up without making this too much longer. We'll see how it comes out. at right now is trying to make sure everything is nice and smooth and clean and looks square. I've got nice sharp corners. That's looking pretty good. So I want to try and make sure that this point is in the middle. Obviously if I take it hold it level with the anvil and whack it down, I'm going to push it all the way to the other side of the anvil. So you need to be a little, little gentle with this. Kind of hold it up at an angle. You can sight down the length of the bar.
pretty good. I'm gonna turn off the forge, I'm gonna cool this down, and then let's take a look at it uh, with the ruler, see how straight it is, see how well centered it is, all of that. So let's take a look. We're gonna hold this up to the straight edge, and kind of the first thing we're asking ourselves is, is it straight along the length? And it's, it's looking pretty straight there. The tip is maybe a little off, but you can see as I'm holding this up along the length, there are not any big deviations away from the edge of the ruler. And what we can do then to see whether or not we're even is that point, which this may be hard to see, should be hovering right over that first mark there. And you know, it's not bad. What this will tend to show you, and actually this may be a little off on this, right, if you've got one side that's curving away and is not centered, you'll be able to see that as you go through these rotations. So it's been a little while since I've made one of these. I'm pretty happy with, uh, well, since I've done this particular exercise, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Is it, is it perfect? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Um, there is a little bit more waviness in here than, than I would personally like if I was really practicing this and trying to get it nice and sharp. My point is not exactly centered. Um, so what I would do next in this exercise is I would cut this off, put it back in, do it again. And like I said, I would keep doing it until I was consistently making these where they were identical. They're all going from two inches to four inches. Each one of these looks the same. If you mixed them up, you couldn't tell which one was which. Just keep doing that until you can get, um, you know, at least four of them that are, are identical. Even better, if you can get four in a row that are all the same and you're just kind of knocking these out, you should get a lot faster as you're doing it as well. So this will be improving both your speed and your accuracy. Um, and this, I mean, it's so much of blacksmithing starts with putting a point and drawing out a taper on things. Uh, it is an essential skill. It is a great first skill um, to learn as a blacksmith is how to put a point on things. Uh, next week, we're going to take a look at lesson two, uh, which is a little bit, I think of an odd jump, it's how to punch a hole in something. Um, lesson three, we'll get to um, probably later this month or, or a few weeks from now. That is how to draw out a round taper. You'll remember in the book review video I did, which I'll link down below, uh, I talked about how these lessons I feel like are a little out of order. Um, if I was gonna be doing this, I'd do the square point and then I'd go back and I'd do the round point, lesson three. Uh, but we'll go through the, the order of the book um, so that you guys have all those. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, again, I, I'm glad that uh, we've got power. Uh, we've got water. Hopefully we won't have a boil advisory pretty soon. Um, and I am back out in the shop and uh, hammering away on stuff. I will see you guys again soon. Thanks so much and stay safe out there.